It's uh, everything I dreamed of. I want to tell my dad that I love him. I still don't know what just happened. I'm just so grateful. Just so grateful for the opportunity to play this game. The legacy is not what you give people, it's what you put inside people, but also what they put inside of me. Hey everyone, welcome to Beyond the Locker Room Part 2 Dose with my good friend Lisa Motley from Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. Lisa, welcome back. Thanks for spending time with me again. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Glad to be back. So last week we talked about how the draft came to Vegas and about Vegas itself. And it really is such a destination. It's, you know, sports, everything. Sports spas. I'm going to come up with a new slogan for you all. Uh, Sports spas and sunscreen. Anyway, so we talked last week about getting the draft. The pandemic, you know, came, so it delayed everything. Let's talk day of. You said, really, it's the NFL show being broadcast. But the week before, what was your schedule like and your team at LVCVA? I'd say it was probably the year before. So we, um, the week leading in, we had daily meetings with the NFL to the point where they actually go through a minute-by-minute schedule. It had 400 lines on an Excel document. I mean, it was everything down from when is Maria going to hair and makeup? And when does Maria get into her car and get to the red carpet stage? And we walked through this footprint, I mean, at nauseam. I can recite in my in my sleep now um, what it looked like. But, I mean, to kind of tell the viewers at home, too, I think there was some confusion about that beautiful stage on the Bellagio Fountains. So that was the red carpet stage. So the 21 prospects who came to the destination originally were going to be in boats um, and taken to the stage. Um, and then lawyers and uh, indemnification and, you know, all that comes into play. And someone said, this might not be safe. So they end up getting dropped off. But I can tell you a cool behind the scenes thing. There was actually divers in the Bellagio Fountain from a safety standpoint. So I remember one of the days on the call with Dave McCann, who oversaw the security for the NFL, he says, okay, we're we're doing a a walkthrough of the draft experience. And then we're doing a swim through this afternoon. I mean, something you would never, never think of. Um, We only had one diver or one tourist try to jump in or fan and they, they caught him before he even hit the water. Like they, they, they were on it. So you kind of go through that part of it with the NFL um, and then you go down Flamingo. So we've never shut down Las Vegas Boulevard for that amount of time. Um, that was a lot of a lot of goodwill from our county commissioners who made sure for all you fans who were either there or were not there to make sure that the deliveries could get into the hotels. So we know you're going to drink a lot and you're going to eat a lot and you probably need clean linens. So how do we get those into the hotel? So we had to open the, the streets uh, between 1 and 6 a.m. each day to make sure that we could allow for that and allow for traffic to get in. Um, and then for the first time ever, we changed the name of Las Vegas Boulevard. I don't believe we'll ever do it again. This is a one-time deal to draft drive. And um, we did a nice ceremony with the commissioner. And then you go down to draft experience where you've got everything from a 40 yard dash running against a virtual NFL player to a, a play 60 and kick and throw, um, the Lombardi trophies were on display. You could get your photo taken in one of the uniforms that a player would play and the helmets. Um, so all of those details were everything we would work through with the NFL to get there. Um, I think the months leading into it, true testament to the destination, and I know, Maria, you watched it, they peppered in as much Las Vegas entertainment or culinary that they could. You've got Blue Man Group on the stage, the Java Walkies. Chris Angel came out of a straight jacket to open round two. So they really, everybody embraced this from the city. Um, so from that standpoint, our calls the week leading in were really about the entertainment and the programming. The months leading into it were all about county permitting and getting the volunteers. We needed over 1,200 volunteers and getting them uniforms and getting um, Metro to sign off on road closures and Metro police to make sure. I mean, the security presence there was more than New Year's Eve in in Times Square. Um, it It was those more behind the scenes operational logistical for the six months, and then really the two weeks leading in was finalizing the program. 400 lines on an Excel well, doc. <laughs> I will send it to you, but you didn't get it from me. No, no, I just want to see it. You know, we're always learning in our industry, whether it's TV, production, media, hosting, whatever. But I'm you like, would love this. 400 lines? Super Bowl has a thousand lines, is what I'm told. A friend of mine showed me his Super Bowl packet one year, and I'm like, what in the world? So, yeah, that. I mean, the NFL, all the pro sports, but especially the NFL, they're the NFL for a reason. They're detailed. You guys are detailed. So I'm assuming it was a match made in heaven. But so draft day comes. 
you know, what's your schedule like and your team, you know, supposedly everything's in place and then we'll talk about more security in a moment, but what's your work day like? So draft day was first day was Thursday. So um, my team is a big proponent of however our volunteers or teammates, whatever their journey is, we're going to take the same journey because if we need to adjust. So I got to the convention center at 6 a.m. We got on the monorail. We rode it over to, well, we got them set at the at the um, convention center because now there's a tent there for check-in and we're selling monorail passes. So we take the monorail in. So we take that journey. And then we get to the Westin, which was the headquarter hotel for the teammates. Um, I'm calling them teammates because... We did have volunteers, but the teammates actually are paid by the NFL. So it was a nice um, up for our volunteer portal, which has about 8,000 people. But there was a, I would venture a guess that 20% of the volunteer teammates came from out of market to experience it and be part of it. Um, so we were there for their registration and their zone assignments and then their uniform distribution. And then we went over to draft drive for the press conference where the commissioner spoke and then the governor Sislak um, made it NFL day and draft drive day, which is very exciting. And then we hosted about 160 clients. Um, so we had a lunch overlooking the Eiffel Tower, which over at, in the Eiffel Tower, overlooking the red carpet. So we went up there for a, a quick snack. And then we walked across the street as my COO carried the draft drive uh, sign um, with him, which was pretty cool. It wasn't the one that was actually installed. It was the prop one. And then we went to the Raiders party at Dre's. Um, they were having a draft party. And uh, like I told you last week, um, I get pretty emotional about this stuff. And so I left the draft party with my COO and Jenny and our team. And we walked over to the draft theater inside um, or by the forum behind the high roller to see the first pick. Um, it was five years in the making. And dang, Skippy, I'm going to see Roger Goodell make the first pick. And I'm going to see him get booed. Um, and then from there, we went uh, into the forum where, again, we were hosting our clients now for more of a cocktail reception. And then we got out of there probably about 10 o'clock. That was, that was day one. Um, good, good thing I live 10 minutes from the strip. Yeah, no, that is a good thing. I know people don't realize they're like, oh, you work this many days. I go, but it's like early morning to late night. Yes. And you got a little food, which is good. Cause sometimes that doesn't happen in our jobs. Right. Sometimes you just grab a cracker that's sitting there yeah. and hope it's, hope it's a cracker. Yeah, exactly. But I just had. But I just had. So, what was it like for you and the team and everyone to watch that first pick? And I know someone who wasn't familiar with the draft. They're like, "Why are they booing him?" I go, "Oh, that's what they do." But um, for Roger Goodell, but what was it like to see all that hard work come to fruition? And you're like, "Oh my gosh, that's the first pick." It's the most surreal moment of your life, right? Like Vegas was never going to be home to football. Vegas was never going to be home to professional sports. And to get us that far and know that the Super Bowl is on the horizon, it's just one of those so prideful and knowing how much work and sweat and tears went into it. It's just, it, it, it's surreal. Like, I don't even, I don't know how to describe it. I just don't. Well, you guys are so busy because you had this, but you also have other events that you're all trying to work on 24 seven. So take me through the next couple of days. And it was an interesting draft from my perspective, because usually it's quarterbacks right away. We were like, there are no quarterbacks coming. Right. There are no, what you know, last year, lots of quarterbacks, which I thought it was great to, you know, spread it out a little evenly, a little more even. But um, so tell me the next couple of days, there was still the same amount of hype through a viewer, me watching the broadcast. And like you said last week, you know, fans got to, you know, say the picks and different, and you really involved a lot more people. So talk about the next couple of days after that. So I think once you can take a deep breath after day one and there's no incidents and you know, that's your main day and it looked so great on TV, you're getting comments from people left and right. So you get to take a deep breath. So you, but you rinse and repeat, but that morning we were very fortunate. Um, so we did host the future host cities um, for the draft, including Kansas city in 23 and Detroit in 24. And that was really fun for us because that's that's our brethren. We're all in this together to elevate sports. And then we got the opportunity to do a behind the scenes tour of everything we had done. So we got to get on the stage and take photos behind the, the podium and go into the player uh, green room where they are. It's to go into the command center to see where Metro and everybody's watching. So that's the best moment as you're now here. And I remember walking out of there. So it's noon. And now we're just here to take whatever comes because now everything's in place. Now it's just, you wait. So we literally, we had a war room that overlooked um, the footprint and we went upstairs and I can't tell you what we're working on, but uh, we finalized another bid for a totally different sport. Like we were, you're there and you've got time. And so you're, you know, we just got to keep moving. Like 
we're not going to rest on our laurels of the draft, but we had to keep going. So we, we focused, shifted to another sport. I love um, the tease. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. And then um, Saturday. And wait, when you announce it, I'll post it to you and say, this is what she was talking about, everyone. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> well, and it's funny. I mean, I've been in TV trucks. I've seen setups small to the biggest. And I still behind the scenes, especially for your clients and whomever you take, that is so exciting to me. It's like, oh yes. my gosh, here we are. This is huge. And it's not people's 15 seconds of fame. You know, it's like, this is how it all came about. This is how, and now we're here and you get to share it with important clients and friends and family. And, and that's super cool to me. Just. Well, and I think one of the cool things, so Aubrey Walton, shout out to her. She is the I think, senior director. She's our liaison with the NFL. So she holds our hands through every bid from whether it was Pro Bowl, Draft or Super Bowl, but she comes from the convention visitor bureau. She understands that world. So she's the best. She can talk to the NFL and she can talk to the destinations and she's just so calm and fair. She called me on Thursday and she said, I may have this opportunity for Steve. Steve Hill is our president and CEO of the LVCDA and they've never done it before. And it was him getting the opportunity to go on stage on Saturday and be interviewed about how much this meant to the destination, what a marriage made in heaven it is with the NFL. So he, we didn't tell him because we want to make sure that it was all locked in, right? You don't want to promise and then go, never mind. So at 2.15 on Saturday, three of us got to go actually behind the stage of where the picks were being done live and see him mic'd up and see him out there. And it was, that's one of those moments where you're just like, this, how did, what did I do right in my life that I'm standing here right now? Um, that I think between the first pick and that, but you're right. It's the behind the scenes stuff that people go, I had no idea. Um, they just think it happens, which is kind of our job though, right? Mm -hmm. You, the fans should never see a sweat or see a hiccup. We know there might've been a hiccup, but the, as long as the fan is safe and enjoying themselves, that's, that's our role. So, but behind the scenes, I think is really an awe moment for, for people who haven't seen it before. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, I've interviewed him before for the NFR and he is lovely, great, smart, the man for the job. But yeah, people don't see the, oh my gosh, the battery's dead. Who didn't replace the battery in his mic <laughs> run? You know, the, the right audio person has, you know, 17 extra batteries, boom, boom. No one ever sees it. But behind the scenes, you're like, oh my word, oh my word. But yeah, what a moment. And you mentioned safety, of course. Uh, you talked a little bit about security last time. What does it take, especially in Vegas, to have that venue, all of them secure. You know, I got to tell you, we have one of the best safety and security departments in the world, and they train every day. People come from all over the world to train in Las Vegas. They're just so good at it. We go out to other events. Uh, Lieutenant Bell uh, runs our special events for Metro. And he, I don't know if there's anybody else in this world who has the, will make it happen, can do attitude. Um, he'll look at something, he'll take a deep breath, and he's like, you know, we're going to make it happen. Um, and it was really him and then bringing together all of the outdoor uh, outside agencies, whether it was Nevada State Police, which is our former highway patrol. You had um, the, the federal government was there. You had Homeland Security there. And it was meeting after meeting to make sure safety was the number one priority. So knowing um, what we spent on it now, and I won't share that amount, we didn't spare any cost to make sure that this event was safe. Um, in fact, Lieutenant Bell for the 2020 draft, it was his idea to totally shut down Flamingo. And we're all looking at him and he said, folks, we can't afford for something to happen on Las Vegas Boulevard from a safety and security standpoint. Let's just get in front of it and let's just do it. And um, so we all came from the place of fan safety, spared no expense, and really just the multi-jurisdictional people in one room. And they've got, I'd say 40 TVs. And I'm like, they could find, if they were looking for somebody with a red hat, I would watch on a screen and they would have technology that they would go in front of the Bellagio fountains and they would, they would search whoever that was. And then you would see the police approach them. So we had no incidences because everybody was talking the same language. We were on the same playbook and knew that customer safety was number one. And again, we do events. Uh, the events are in our DNA. And this was an event the size of New Year's Eve. Uh, NFR is right up there as well as there's NASCAR weekends. Um, we do this really well, um, and we would be happy to share with anybody who would like to listen about safety and security, because it really is a very important topic for any success of any event. Well, and I think it's so great. The draft has to move around. The Super Bowl destination moves around. 
But for you all, and like you said, it's with everyone to just be, yeah, what do you need to know? We're here to share. We want, you know, the draft, anything sports wise to grow, you know, exponentially. It's like, we, we want this to happen. So we'll share, we might not get it for another, I don't know how many years. And, you know, I I can't even imagine what it would be like to have the draft in Vegas again, after you guys have already perfected it. But, you know, that to me, the world is so competitive out there and, oh, you want ratings and you want this and that. But that to me really, you know, says, wow, this is cool. It's the draft and it's all behind the scenes and all of that. And the players, of course, and they're, like I said last week, they're crazy outfits and their families and all the press. But it's like, look, let's just make this a show, not, you know, in a hotel in 1936, where nearly, what is it? A third of the players didn't go play. Uh, in the right. NFL once they were drafted. So right. it, it's it's very cool. And yeah, some people are like, oh, it's gotten so publicized and all this. But it's an event that, like you said last week, the fans were all with the different clubs. What you call it? The inner circle? Inner circle. But we, so, we should, we should also ahead. talk about the stuff that happens outside that's not broadcast. So on, when, on Thursday morning before draft experience started, Special Olympics came down to the draft experience and got to participate in activities. The 21 prospects went out to local high schools and met with players and did clinics. We had other youth and amateur um, football clubs come down to draft experience and partake in that. Um, We had the veterans come out to watch the draft theater. On Saturday, they made draft day on the Bellagio Fountains all about local entertainment. So my friend's daughter is in um, an aerialist jugglist group and I texted her and I said, does your daughter want to perform? And she's like on the Bellagio red carpet during draft. And I said, yeah. So we made it all about what was else was out there. And then you've got the NFL green project. Um, Jack Rowe oversees that they partnered with the Springs Preserve in Las Vegas to plant over 30 trees. They, uh, we involved UNLV's school of environmental sciences, as well as their sports management program. They were paid to work the draft experience to educate fans on composting and recycling every bit of material that was used in the draft has now found a new home. None of it gets trashed. They found a seamstress locally who can recycle that to uh, make boots and scarves and purses. They'll use it as murals in um, day centers. Uh, They'll send some to the senior centers. And then they also did an education program for over 150 students from UNLV College of Southern Nevada and Nevada State College on Tuesday night at Springs Reserve and did a career panel about sports careers and talking about how important sustainability is through that footprint. So it was more than just what you saw on TV, which again was great for Vegas. It was a great event to drive tourism. It was a great commercial, but really the community involvement and the commitment of the NFL to Las Vegas. um, It's just top notch. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned it because most people were just like, oh, the draft is cool, but all that behind the scenes, the good juju, as I call it behind the scenes. Yes. And I think too, you know, some players, unfortunately don't um, in any pro sport, their path gets a little skewed. So what a great way to start them off on the right foot yep. by visiting children. And like you said, special Olympics and other, you know, young sports, uh, you know, young kids that are playing sports that look up to them and go, I want to be like you one day. Yeah. It's, it's great how they just mini social responsibility and the NFL green. I mean, it's great. They did for pro bowl and we've got bigger initiatives planned for a super bowl. Um, so it was, it's just great that the community has a legacy component of this. And then our locals can see these events are important for us. They're economic drivers and we don't pay a state income tax. There's a reason for that. We, we bring special events and sporting events and entertainment. And that's, that's kind of how it's in our DNA. We, that's how we make the world go round in Vegas. I'm calling you for a volunteer work position. Uh, when the super, Please. Bowl there. I'm just telling Please. you, me and you football. Go, whatever you want to do, I'll put you to work. I will. And you know, we both, we, we like to work, why do you, I'm going to close with a couple things. Um, why do you love your job besides the draft seeing something like this, but why do you love your job? So I may have the greatest job in the world. And I've been told that um, my passion is Las Vegas. And I grew up in Minnesota. It was a sports town. I moved to Vegas. There was no sports. And then I end up in this position with a blank canvas and told here, let, let, let's go, which is how we got to the greatest arena on earth, right? I mean, that's a lot of team effort um, on our behalf as well. But I get to represent Las Vegas through sports. I mean, how do you go wrong there? So, um, and I love my job because of the support I have on my team and senior leadership and even everybody in the community. I think we talked last week about 
even COVID, I would call hotels and say, or Jenny and I, we've got business for you. It's they, how many texts I've got from people saying what you guys have done to elevate our town and it's good for them, right? It's, it's heads and beds and that's their livelihood. So it's, it's the whole teamwork in Las Vegas that just, you pinch yourself every day and go, this is, I get paid to do this. Like I would volunteer to do this. Don't tell don't tell my boss that, but I, I, yeah. I say that all the time. Um, I said, I do my job every day for free if I could afford it, but I can't. <laughs> so talking to people and getting their stories, I'm like, you know, we might have to, you know, arm wrestle for who has the best job, but yeah, I mean, when you, what is that saying? When you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yep. That's and true. It's, you know, the long hours that you put in and all of that, and to make this draft and all the events. Like you said, you had a, c- a couple hours of not downtime, but you guys were all working and you, you know, can't wait to hear the announcement whenever you do on some new big thing. So it, it's amazing. It's an amazing town. Um, I love that, you know, you, you all really always include the locals. It's not just tourism destination. You try to include the locals in, you know, most anything you do, which I yes. think is phenomenal. Well, it's, it's our town, right? That's, those are our people. It's our community. That's, we want them to be engaged and, and part of it. That's why we do what we do. All right. I always ask this too. How has football affected your life? How has football affected my life? Well, um, I have two dogs and they're named Denver and Dallas because I am a Broncos fan and my ex-husband, shout out to my ex-husband. He's still one of my best friends. He's a, he's a Cowboys fan. Um, so all the way from that. But as, as a kid, you know, I, I'll tell this story and I'll admit I'm a girl. I grew up in a Vikings town, but I was not a Vikings fan. I was not in a Vikings household. Um, so I got to I got to pick whoever I wanted, and I picked Joe Montana. So my hamster was named Joey at age six, and then Joe Montana went over to the Kansas City Chiefs, and I wasn't really a Chiefs fan, and I wasn't um, a fan of, oh, his name escapes me now, who replaced him. So John Elway did a Diet Pepsi commercial, and I became a Broncos fan, um, and I was fortunate to go to, go to Super Bowl 50 in San Francisco, Peyton Manning wins the Super Bowl. I mean, that's just a moment. So I think football and sports in general is just ingrained in, in my life. But I mean, everything from a little kid to watching it with your family to having your friends come out and watch it in Las Vegas to, to going to games and the camaraderie. It's just there's no other sport like it. There is. I used to watch Sundays after church. My dad would not go because he worked all the time. So we'd all sit and watch. My mom would make his breakfast and we that, you know, same thing. And I love being girls who love sports. Yes. Yes. That that's key. Uh, anything else you want to add the draft, what people can take from that and, and, and come into Vegas for not the draft other events coming up. Let's let's, you know, promote Vegas. Why not? Yeah, sure. So in July, we've got UFC international fight week. Uh, we have a new component this year called UFC X will be held at the convention center. And we've included three youth and amateur events. I think we've just discussed how you've got an anchor event and there's a bunch of events around it. So uh, that would include USA weightlifting, USA boxing, and international Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So you'll have the opportunity for youth and amateur now to descend on the destination and get the spotlight of UFC and UFCX. Uh, we also have new this year PBR teams, the world finals for the new league that's starting. Obviously, we'll have a NASCAR weekend in the fall, Las Vegas Bowl, Pac-12 Football Championship, Shriners, PGA Open, and of course, all of our favorite events, the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, December 1st through 10th. I will be in Vegas coming up in a few weeks for a photo shoot for the NFR. And then, of course, back uh, with the crew for the rodeo. Um, Thank you so much for taking time. I know if there's a busy woman in this world, it is you. It's you. It's you. Right back at you. It's us. And we love it. Uh, check out, you know, uh, there's lots of stuff still online about the draft. It's fun to rewatch stuff. And of course, anything Vegas. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Wouldn't Welcome to the sports and entertainment capital of the world. I love it. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Maria. Uh, love you. And we'll see you soon.